Hello my friend, welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about performance. This, in my opinion, is a really, really important topic. When it comes to performance boost, there is a plethora of things that you can do. Most of those things are taken care of by the, the compiler itself that is going to do all the optimizations underneath the hood without you knowing. Here we just look for overall principles so you are prepared some simple snippets. Let's start from the first one, which is lookup tables. In this code, I have a very, very big file, which is lorem.txt. Here you can see that lorem.txt is 26 giga, so it's a very, very big lorem file. And the goal of this process is to read all the consonants of this very big file. So what is the algorithm? We simply open the file, we assume that the operation went fine, then we are gonna malloc a buffer, right? We're gonna malloc giga. Giga is one GB byte, as you can see from the define. Then we are gonna continuously read one giga into the buffer. Okay, so we are basically fetching one giga of chars inside our buffer. I'm gonna read all the chars and continuously search for a consonant, right? With the function is cons. If I stumble upon a consonant, I increase the count. It's a very simple algorithm, right? Open a file, fetching one giga per time, and then simply iterating over the chars inside the buffer, searching for consonants. The function is consonant is simple, right? I have is alpha. So first of all, I have to check if the char is an alphabetical one, and then I have to check if it is not a vocal, right? I think this is the best way to search for consonants. I simply use the string char function, which is uh, simply searching for matches uh, given a, an input string, which in this case is the vocals, upper and lower case. All right, let's launch this program and let's see how much time it will take. So I compile with flag zero optimization, so the compiler is not going to perform any kind of optimization. And then I just launch with time. All right, let's go. All right, so we got almost 600 seconds, pretty long. And we got here 12 billion almost 13 billion consonants. Now we have this code in which I've added a lookup table. A lookup table is simply an array, an array that contains all ones at the position of consonants, uppercase and lowercase. So you can see I have all the consonants in uppercase and lowercase, and I assign the value in that position in the array. I use the value of the char itself, which is a one byte integer, so I can use that. And I say, in the position of the char, put one. So for example, in the first case, in the position of the B uppercase and lowercase, put one. I do that for all the consonants. So this is an array of 128 elements that contains in specific location ones, which are gonna be true, right? Our values for truth. In all the other places, I have zero namely false. Basically, the code is specular as before, right? But the thing is that I'm accessing my lookup table using the char. I don't call all the times the function is consonant. You understand, right, how I leverage the value of the char itself to index an array, a lookup table. Let's run this code. So I'm gonna compile as well with zero optimization and I'm gonna launch. Boom, as you can see, the program is much, much faster, right? less than half the time. Well, indeed, using a lookup table when we're dealing with big, big data like this uh, 26 giga lorem file is very, very useful. The thing is that in this code inside the loop, I have all the times to call this function is cons. And calling a function takes time. I mean, it is fast, but takes time if you're dealing with a big, big input, like in our case. So when we are calling so many times, so many times this function, well, all this time is going to accumulate and you get the results you just saw. When you're dealing with big data input and you have a problem like that, for example, and you want to minimize the call to functions, you just create a lookup table in which you have all the data you need and that's it. You're going to simply access this array, which is faster. So TLDR, these lookup tables are super handy when you have these kind of bottlenecks, right? In this case, I'm forced to call the function is cons to check if uh, actually the char is a consonant. But no, I just simply look inside my custom lookup table. Of course, this takes time to construct, but with ChatGPT, it's just one second. <laughs> 
All right, when we talk about improvements of code, we are not only talking about the, the speed, the run speed of the code, but we are also talking about the resources that the actual process is taking up. So here I have a very simple code in which we have two structs, struct bad and struct good. These structs contain some data the, of different data types. And let's just run this code. Let's see what those printf are gonna give us back. When I use size off on the struct bad and good. If we simply sum all the bytes of all these data, we get 25, right? Depends on the actual machine, but I assume we all have these values equal. So I just run the code and I get 40 and 32. Hmm. So in either case, I don't get 25. The thing is that we have data alignment. The compiler is doing all the tricks to boost the performance. Indeed, when data is aligned, we get a better performance CPU wise, but forget about that. This is a thing for another video, maybe data alignment, if you want to search. Just reversing the order of these elements, as you can see, I get an improvement, right? Because in the first case, when I have randomness, all the values are scattered inside my struct, I get 40. And in the second case, I get less than 40, right? I get 32. Basically, I saved eight bytes, simply changing the order of these elements. As you can see, in the second case, I simply took the biggest data type, which is a double, then a long, then a float, then a short, and then charts at the very bottom. So simply ordering all these elements from bigger to smaller, I get this improvement data-wise, right? This is a simple, stupid trick, arguably useless because memory is pretty big, but it's cool to know, right? Why is this happening? Well, again, this is maybe for another video, we need to understand very well what is going on when we are dealing with alignment. And I think visually it's the key. If we have a good visualization of the memory, it's done. We understand super well, maybe another video. All right, here we have another example in which we understand very well the concept of cache and cache misses. Basically, I create a matrix, a matrix with size 42,000, so a big baby, a big object. I do that simply allocating an array of pointers to integer. And then I call another loop in which I'm gonna malloc space for all the integers. So I create essentially my matrix. And I simply have a nested for loop in which I gonna iterate in every cell of this matrix. And I'm gonna access this matrix row column, right? M square row square column. And then simply I have a counter variable in which I'm gonna stock the sum of all the numbers. This is not important just to make some calculation. All right, let's launch. It took me 16 seconds. Perfect, pretty fast. Now I suggest you this little stupid change just to swap these two lines. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete here and pass at the very top. All right, so I simply swap these lines. Let's run again this code. As you can see, the result is way worse, right? We got 98 seconds. Just swapping two lines. The problem here is that we are accessing the elements row wise and not column wise. So every time I'm gonna change the row, and this is super bad because I'm gonna increase a lot the cache misses. Indeed, every time we are dealing with data, the operating system is stocking all this stuff inside caches to make it super fast to access. But if every time we are accessing a new row, which is in a total different position, well, this row is not gonna be found inside the cache. So every time we have to move stuff around and this increase the time to run this process. So it's a very, very silly change, right? That is gonna change drastically the performance of your code. Okay, the last example we are gonna see is memoization. Here we have a simple implementation of the Fibonacci function. And if we run the code like that, you can see that increasingly this becomes slower and slower, right? until a, a, at a certain point it basically freezes. The problem in this code is that every time I call one Fibonacci function, I basically throw away the result. And this is very bad. One smart thing to do is to save all the values obtained by the specific n function, right? To do that, we are gonna create a cache, right? A cache that contains in our case 200 elements. The Fibonacci function this time changes. Every time it's gonna check, first of all, if the value is already in the cache, namely, if the value has already been calculated previously. So it's gonna check if cache in position n, return the value. 
The cool part is that the cache has all zeros, so basically initially it has all falses. So I simply use those values as Boolean values. If we have one value, it means that it is a value calculated by the Fibonacci function. So you return that, otherwise you calculate the value and you stock inside the cache. And then you simply return the value in the cache. Let's try now. I'm gonna run and as you can see, I get instantaneously all the values. Of course, I have an overflow, but I actually don't care. I just want to see how fast this code is with memoization. I can further optimize the code just moving the global array cache inside the Fibonacci function itself. As you can see, I have the cache which is embedded and this is better because global variables are kind of tricky, right? It's always better to avoid global variables. So I have a static cache. Static is really important. Basically, when you say static inside a function, you're saying this is like a global variable, but private. So only Fibonacci can access this variable but for any regard it's like a global variable that is gonna keep all these values it's not gonna be deleted like uh, variables which are in the stack so as you can see the code works exactly the same but having a static variable to me it's cleaner given that this is only used by fibonacci of course if you remove the static here the code is not gonna work if i run first of all i get all gibberish here why is that well because this is simply a uh, variable which lives in the stack so i get all the garbage values so i have to initialize to zero when the variable is global all the values by default are already zero so in this case i have to initialize let's try again and we're back to slow land as you can see because the cache is not static right so that's it for this performance video if you like this kind of content uh, let me know in the comments maybe if you want that i go deeper with the explanation the theory behind all this stuff just Again, let me know. <laughs> Thank you, my friend.